So my name is Roy Arsan. Uh, I'm a solution architect here at Google Cloud. Uh, I'm part of the data, data analytics team uh, at Google. Um, and I work with a lot of customers across different industries, uh, mostly around uh, financial services, healthcare, pharma, and retail. Um, a lot of the use cases around data movement, they, moving data from A to B. Uh, oftentimes, that data is uh, logs. Oftentimes, the use cases is log analytics and security analytics. So I always find myself in, those, in this hybrid between data analytics and security. Uh, as far as products that I work on, mostly is BigQuery, Dataflow, and PubSub. So uh, in this talk, we're going to focus on Dataflow. But a lot of the concepts are applicable in other runners, other cloud providers. In fact, some of the tool set that I'm going to talk about uh, is cloud agnostic. So why benchmark thy pipeline? Um, raise your hand if you ever had the questions about whether this pipeline is going to meet your performance SLOs. OK, I think we have 80% of the room. I'm glad for the remaining 20%, your pipeline are perfectly functioning. Uh, that's great. You're the exception. Um, but no, but, but for real, at this point, you already built your pipeline. You profile it. You optimize it as much as you can. But how does it perform in the real world, right? Uh, what's the event end-to-end -end latency? What's the event uh, throughput in terms of event per second? Um, is will my pipeline operate with the optimum performance cost ratio? In other words, will I utilize the resources effectively, right? Uh, all this to say is, is my pipeline properly sized and configured, right? And by size, it's not just the worker unit size, but also all the different uh, parameters you may be passing to your uh, pipeline. The more complex the pipeline, the more parameters and knobs you probably have. So disclaimers, uh, I will present some results in this talk. They're for demo purposes only, right? There's no performance or cost guarantees here. Um, do, you know, test your own pipeline. Your mileage may vary, but test it with your own real data and environment, right? And we're going to talk about how sensitive, uh, obviously, performance is to all these factors, right? Uh, I see a lot of, uh, you know, smiling faces uh, excited about benchmarking their pipelines. Uh, and yeah, no pipeline harmed in this benchmarking process, no fireflies harmed. Uh, in fact, I'm glad to say all the tests ran successfully to completion. All the jobs were drained. So kudos uh, to the runner, in this case, Dataflow. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of fault tolerance happening in the back end, um, but you'll see some of the results. Um, I did not have to cancel any job. Uh, so why benchmarking is so hard? Um, Heterogeneous data types, different data types flowing through the pipeline, different pipeline types, batch versus streaming, have different requirements, testing requirements, uh, different stages. Any stage could be a bottleneck, including the source and the sync, uh, different cloud providers, different runners. Um, how do you select your appropriate benchmark test? Um, configuring non-trivial environment, right? Setting up a VPC, networking, virtual private cloud, your networking, uh, configuring the worker spec. So, it is managed, but to some extent, right? There's still a lot of configuration that needs to be handled. Um, there's a variety of performance metrics out there. Observability is not a problem, at least with data flow, but it's oftentimes challenging for the customers and for the operators to know um, what should I look at, right? Um, what is impacting my performance? And then variability in performance itself, right? Getting consistent results and benchmarking for anybody who's done benchmarking is always a challenge, right? Um, and uh, you know, the the more moving parts you have, the more sensitivity you have uh, to workloads. Um, and then, last but not least, analyzing the data and getting actual insight, right? So, with all those in mind, we kind of get a sense of why benchmarking is so hard. And benchmarking here, I'm talking about benchmarking your own pipeline. I want to draw the distinction between that and benchmarking Beam itself and Beam SDK. Uh, for that, there's a great talk by Alexei uh, Romanenko, uh, who spoke about this right before this, um, how you benchmark Beam and Beam SDKs. But this talk is about benchmarking the, your application that's running in Beam, right? Your custom or uh, you know, uh, provided data flow uh, template, for example. 
So benchmarking tool set. Uh, anybody here use PerfKit Benchmarker? Okay. Well, that's great. Um, I I found out about PerfKit Benchmarker uh, ben Benchmarker about a year ago. It's been around since 2015. It's an open source benchmark framework that was developed open source by Google with a lot of contributions from the community from MIT and Stanford. It was it's really a uh, it wraps hundreds plus standard industry benchmarks, and it's designed to benchmark your compute resources, your disk re uh, storage resources. Uh, think, think, think of, you know, uh, Bunny Plus Plus and FIO for your disk performance. Um, think of iPerf and NetPerf and Ping for your networking performance and your latency. So, a perfect benchmarker can run all these benchmarks across different cloud providers, different resources. Um, and uh, it's not tuned to favor any provider, but it supports a lot of providers, GCP, AWS, Azure, um, Rackspace, OpenStack, on-prem. Um, and yeah, so uh, what it does, it takes care of the provisioning of the test beds. It takes care of running the benchmarks. It takes care of teardown. It takes care of collection of the stats and uh, publishing those stats. It, integrates with BigQuery, with InfluxDB, with Elasticsearch. So when I saw this, I'm like, great. Um, you know, we're operators, developers. We're all lazy. I don't want to recreate the wheel. Uh, let's use something off the shelf. So the good news is that there's, there's going to be bad news. So hang on a little bit. The good news is that it comes with a data flow provider. So in uh, PerfKit Benchmarker, they have a concept of providers, of different cloud providers they have. You know, they have a provider for EMR, for data proc, for data flow. So there's a basic provider for data flow. And also there's a basic benchmark, a test. And it's obviously the canonical benchmark uh, Apache Beam example, the word count example. Uh, so yeah, using the Apache Beam word count example, you can run this uh, benchmark. It's kind of too, uh, too small font here to see, but uh, the way PKB works is you give it a configure YAML file, which is a set of configurations to configure your test. In this case, I'm testing word count, right? The, the test that does the frequency count of uh, words in a set of Shakespeare text content, right? Um, so what I'm giving it here is a set of config uh, VM specs, right? I'm giving it um, configuration, Eight core, four core, two core. I'm giving it the jar file, the class name, and the zone I want to run it in. Um, and let's jump to the demo, see how this works. So I already have PKB uh, installed. You know, I fetched it from GitHub and I installed it. Uh, let me see. You give it cloud parameter, in this case, GCP. I'm going to give it my project, which is already in my uh, environment variable. And then uh, let's see what else I'm going to give it. The config file, which uh, the, the ML file you saw on screen. Oh. Benchmark config. And like I said, it does have integration with uh, BigQuery to dump all the results. Uh, you can still retrieve them in, in JSON local files that it writes them to, uh, you know, local disk. But I'm going to just dump all that data in BigQuery so I can analyze it easily. Test data set, test results. Big file data flow, making sure I didn't fat finger anything. Okay, so while this is running, um, as you can imagine, just like a cooking show, I just ran this earlier, uh, an hour ago. Um, and let's jump to see how, how do the results look like. So just, just, just highlighting here that it's running 
this command uh, to run the Beam uh, pipeline and all the parameters, including N1 standard 8, which is one of the VM specs that I set in my YAML file. It's going to do this sequentially with, through all the machines types that I specified. Uh, let's go over here, figure how to do this. Okay. Now, um, with the BigQuery, you can analyze it easily. And using Data Studio, which is a free visualization tool, um, I analyzed the, uh, you know, I, I just displayed, there's not much analysis happening here. I just displayed the runtime of each test the average CPU utilization, uh, which PerfKit Benchmarker is collecting these stats from Dataflow API and from cloud monitoring. And then the total cost, it's, it's you know measuring the total cost. Now you can see how the runtime latency is more or less the same. You know, it's kind of a contrived example. It's a simple WordCat bench. It happens, you know, uh, in, in three, four minutes. Uh, so that difference is kind of um, almost margin, uh, error margin, you know, this cluster spin up and tear down takes more time. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to the runtime, but the average, you can see how the N1 standard two is uh, more utilized and it's one third of the cost of N1 standard eight. So that gives you an idea of, you know, performance cost ratio, how you can maximize that, right? Um, you know, um, for this kind of workload, you probably want to go with the N1 standard two and, and, and just have data flow uh, vertically scale from that, right? Uh, I mean, horizontally scale from that. Uh, but that's kind of a contrived example with the workout bench. Uh, so let's go into something more interesting. Uh, let's pro let's use a Google provided data flow template off the shelf. You can also use your own data flow template. But in this case, I use one of our most popular template, which is PubSub subscription to BigQuery, right? So this data flow template, if you haven't used it before, uh, just does one thing. Uh, pull messages from PubSub subscription, and then writes them to BigQuery table. It supports a user-defined function to kind of massage the data as you want uh, using, using a small snippet of code. Um, in this diagram, you can see kind of the test bed. Um, uh, like I said, everything here is handled by PerfKit Benchmarker. Um, what, I, what I added to the Benchmarker uh, source code is the ability to run streaming pipeline, right? The word count bench was a batch pipeline. Uh, the streaming pipeline included other complexities, like how do you determine the job finished, right? Um, also, a lot of more uh, stats being collected from cloud monitoring and cloud logging. Um, things like PD usage, vCPU time, uh, memory usage, um, any custom counters that you may have, you know, elements produced, throughput, et cetera. So all of that, those are collected and then dumped into BigQuery. Uh, this is um, this is kind of the YAML file. Remember the YAML file we talked about earlier? This is an example of a YAML file that is running across different versions of the template, right? So this is an example of how you can do release testing and performance regression for a specific template that you're using before upgrading it to prod or your own template that you may be developing, right? Dataflow template. You can do cross-product. You can do cross-product of the versions and different machine sizes. Another example here is uh, different input sizes. So now we're changing the benchmark uh, workload. Um, I have a couple of subscriptions here. One has 10 million events, 1 million, 100K. Uh, you can vary the workload like that, right? And test across and see if there's any interesting characteristic uh, that shows up. The, you know, We want to stress test this template. So some uh, results, um, let me see if I can use the clicker. Uh, runtime, there was a significant difference here. Um, you can see how the two core took longer than uh, the 16 core, which is kind of expected. Uh, at the bottom, there's a table of the different machine sizes, just to, just to refresh your memory on what these different machine types actually mean. What are the shapes of them uh, in terms of CPU memory and uh, network egress? Maximum network egress. Now let's move along, um, see how much throughput we're getting, right? Uh, now things are a little bit getting more interesting. You can see standard eight, which is the eight core machine, is hitting 19K EPS, right? Uh, kind of unexpected, is the 16 core is actually hitting 
uh, less than that, right? Uh, so something to investigate, and also these are aggregate results. This is not, not just one run. We talked about variability of uh, performance testing and the challenge of getting consistent results. Well, this is getting average over uh, five runs, right, so far. So there's something, something here worth noting. Now you might think, okay, N1 standard eight is the best one to go. Let me just fire off a pipeline and set the worker size to be eight, and then it can scale horizontally. Well, actually, if you divide this by the number of, uh, the EPS by number of cores, let's look at the EPS per core. The actual best metric is N1 standard two, because you're getting 3K, 3.4K EPS per core, right? That's what customers are looking for, that the ones I'm, I'm working with, they want to have a definitive, almost like reliable, deterministic way to figure out how much throughput am I getting from this template of this version to process my events, right? I have one terabyte of logs a day, 10 terabytes of logs a day. Calculate the EPS from that and figure out your maximum capacity that you need, right? You can plan capacity. You can make sure you can reliably meet your SLOs. In this case, you know, one core, you know, can process 3.4 K EPS. Um, obviously this is synthetic data. Uh, so you want to test with your own data and your own environment. Um, so kind of the conclusion here is, yeah, let's, let's choose N1 standard two for this specific environment, this specific template, this specific data set uh, going forward, which is good because it also happens to be the default machine type used for streaming engine, except this is not using streaming engine. So the default is N1 standard four. So that's an optimization you can use, right? And the cost benefits, you know, they add up uh, for our data flow customers. Now, uh, this kind of uh, reconfirms the same message looking at other metrics, average CPU utilization and total cost. Again, N1 standard two give you the best resource utilization and the you know, lowest cost, right? It's about, in this case, um, you know, I'm gonna try and test my math on the fly. It's, it's one fourth of the N1 standard 16, which makes sense, um, <clears throat> but it's a higher throughput per core. So moving on, uh, some caveats and next steps. So there are limitations in this, which means more future work for all of us. Uh, there's variability in the pipeline performance, uh, runtime, spin up time, tear down, um, failures, right? Um, the good thing is that performance, uh, perfect benchmarker, uh, tolerate failures and retries. And uh, also you can, you can change the knobs that metrics that you're collecting, right? You decide when the job is actually determined completed. In my test, I determined the job to be completed when the PubSub uh, subscription is drained and the job is drained, right? But your, you know, a more accurate way to determine the job actually completed is to figure out that all the events were written to your sync. That's your goal, right? You have 100,000, 100, you know, in this case, 100,000, 1 million events, 1 million were written into the table, right? So you can, uh, this is an area of improvement. Shout out to Sergey, uh, with whom I discussed this with before. Um, Pre-warming pipeline before running each test, that's also an optimization. Um, you wanna make sure, you know, you take into, you take out, you exclude the spin-up time, right? You just wanna care about the job, the streaming job. So one thing is to pre-warm the pipeline and then, you know, with, 10,000 messages and run your test of 1 million message. Um, we are iterating over each test configuration, like I mentioned, but having it iterate over 100 times seems reasonable. Dependency on testbed setup, source sync characteristic. Um, you know, it could be CPU bound. We talked about CPU. We talked about um, briefly about network IO. It could be network bound. It could be memory bound. But, you know, you also want to consider your overall environment. Like if are your workers behind a cloud net, right? Uh, a net device that is limiting how many connections are going through. That could be your bottleneck, right? So there's a lot of sensitivity to your environment. So you wanna make sure you verify those. Um, this, this comes up every once in a while. If you're using data flow with private IP, you're probably using cloud net. You wanna make sure your cloud net capacity is not your limiting factor um, and configure it appropriately. Um, also downstream performance, upstream performance, 
you know, BQ itself has a throughput limit, right? Um, if you're using with, uh, you know, non-multi regions, uh, the throughput is 300 megabit, megabyte per second per, re per project. So you can optimize this as much as you want. You're limited to the sync performance, right? So also to keep those in mind. Um, and then sensitivity to input workload. Uh, so what I just tested was technically the same 1 million event, 1 plus 1.5, across different configuration. You can see how the last configuration took a little bit more time to drain the queue, the subscription. Um, but this is kind of a backlog testing, right? A more realistic testing is to have a steady state uh, or steady state with per burst, which more mimic log traffic, right? It's very bursty, especially if you have like VPC flow logs. Every 10 minutes or something, you're going to have a whole bunch of them uh, in your queue and can mess up your pipeline. So this is proper performance testing. Realistic testing is to, is, is to include that as a next step. And another one is to stress test this, is to do steady state with step function, right? So you have, you know, let's say you have a rate of 10K a second, you keep throwing that, and then you add another 5K, another 5K, another 5K, and then you see where the pipeline, not breaks, but plateaus, right? Um, I'm open for other uh, test profiles as well. Uh, what I just did, what I did already is just a backlog, but we can add more benchmark tests, right? Um, the data flow provider itself is already implemented. We just need to tweak how that uh, test data is, is, uh, is sent. And then running different types of data. In my case, it's synthetic data that mimics logs, which is, like I said, the biggest use case I'm working with. But maybe you have assets inventory. Maybe you have alert. Maybe you have other stuff. So test with your own data. Uh, sometimes it's, it's heterogeneous data going through the same pipeline. So those are some of the next steps that I can see. Uh, to enhance this further. Uh, like I said, your mileage may vary based on your data environment and workload profile. Now, this is the call to action slide. Um, all this to say, benchmark your own pipeline, uh, you know, to estimate cost, plan capacity, to meet your future SLOs, um, avoid performance regression as you upgrade to the latest template, or maybe you fix your own uh, beam pipeline. Um, you know, I've used PerfKit Benchmarker, which is battle tested. Um, it's designed to test across different cloud providers. But in this case, you know, you can test it across one cloud provider or one or two runners and then run through all different configuration for your pipeline, right? Um, share feedback, suggestions, right? Um, me personally, uh, it took me three weeks to add the support for streaming template. Uh, to the GCP uh, data flow provider uh, benchmark. So, you know, um, always looking for feedback, but we can really move the needle on this thing uh, because it's, like I said, it's, there's a lot of the mechanics is already built out for us in terms of this provisioning the environment, collecting stats. You can focus on the fun work, right? Which is how does the test look like, right? Let me try this. Or what stats do I need? Let me pull these metrics. But the plumbing on getting the metrics from cloud monitoring, et cetera, that's already built in. And then, yeah, like I said, extend uh, PerfKit, if I, if, I have, if I haven't said that already. And then there's a wiki with good tutorials to get started with PerfKit Benchmarker. And then this is a forked repo where I added my contributions and uh, the support for streaming template. Uh, I'm working with the PerfKit Benchmarker team to merge this upstream. And which uh, makes, brings me to this slide to acknowledge uh, all the folks that helped me uh, to get this going. Uh, Sergey, with a lot of great ideas uh, on how to performance test uh, streaming pipeline. Diego, also from, who's a software engineer, uh, you know, part of the Perfect Benchmarker team, uh, also helped me with this. Um, and last but not least, Alexi for disambiguating perf performance testing and benchmarking. Okay. I may have used it interchangeably, but check out his talk to learn about the difference between the two. Uh, with that, I can open it uh, for questions. See how.